I'm Jeff Fritz with soundstage.com, and I'm joined today by Bob Hazelwood. He is the Director of Engineering and Product Development of Andover Audio. Bob, how are you today? I'm doing wonderful. Nice to talk to you. Well, I appreciate you joining me, and we want to jump in. Andover Audio, for those of you that don't know, they're based out of Massachusetts, and they've got some really interesting, in fact, I would say unique products, and that's kind of where I want to start. Bob, tell us a little bit about yourself and a little bit about Andover Audio. Well, um, I'll start with myself. I could go for hours, you know, on that, of course, because, you know, <laughs> everyone can. So I'll kind of keep it short. You know, I've been a, I've been into audio since I was um, a kid. Um, I got my my uncle was uh, very into building, you know, big electro voice corner horns and that sort of thing and kind of got me hooked. Um from a young age, and I've been doing this all my life. Worked for a number of companies. Uh, I've done uh, work with, I was uh, uh, with JBL for three and a half years running their car audio division. I've, I've worked with ADS for a total of about 13 years and two stints. And uh, most recently, before Andover, um, I was uh, doing product design for Cambridge Soundworks. I basically took over the uh, the product design um, tasks when Henry uh, Close retired uh, at Cambridge. So I was there since about uh, 1999. Um, Andover is a spinoff of Cambridge. So uh, we were... Of course, founded by by Henry Close and and uh, uh, Tom DeVesto, um, and where they were building some very successful uh, computer speakers. Uh, Creative Labs liked them, uh, started selling them in partnership with with their Sound Blaster sound cards because that was new technology at the time back then, and um, bought the company. Uh, it was one of their their expansions. Uh, at, at along with a number of other companies uh, in the, the U.S. and various parts of the um, of the industry, and uh, when the sound card business started kind of going into the crapper, when uh, most uh, computers didn't need accessory cards anymore, and it was really now just for gamers, they started spinning off the divisions, and uh, our founder. Um, Rob Monero uh, saw the writing on the wall, worked out a very uh, friendly deal to separate the section of Cambridge Audio that was doing the engineering and OEM business for a number of other companies um, that included companies in the motorcycle business as well as the um, uh, uh, casino gaming business and and uh, video conferencing and that sort of thing. We were we were building the the audio subsystems for some of their products, and um, uh, that was in 2012 uh, when we founded when when basically we took that section of Cambridge Soundworks and that became Andover Audio, but not as a brand. So. Um, we always really wanted to get back into the branded audio business, but there are a lot of companies out there doing it and doing it very well. Uh, we didn't want to come out with product that, you know, what the world doesn't need yet another loudspeaker manufacturer, let yet another amplifier manufacturer, or somebody else right. making top DAX. I mean, <laughs> it's like they're out there in the hundreds. Um, and there was a, there was a meeting that I, I had with Henry at one point, not a, a meeting, but a dinner at CES where, um, I asked him, well, Henry, why haven't you come out with a new product that is sort of a leading edge state of the art product like the old KLH nines you did back in the sixties? And he basically said, well, it's not exciting. So, well, what do you mean? High end audio is not exciting. He said, oh yeah, high end audio is exciting. I mean, great, great music is exciting for everybody, but where he was getting his excitement those days was now bringing the essence of high-end audio, the, the pleasure that you get from, from a good sound system, the, the musical uh, accuracy you get from a good sound system, and bringing it into a form that was accessible to the average person, uh, both price-wise, complexity-wise, um, you know, just, just you name it. It just made it simple for, uh, for people to uh, access the pleasure that we get from high-end audio. And that kind of struck me. Uh, and, you know, Rob, who was also with, with Henry for a long time, um, that that's really where our, our niche is, where people really weren't doing that. So uh, and that's reflected in the products that we're producing, things like the Model 1 and, and, and what have you. They bring um, audiophile sens sensibilities and audiophile 
quality in terms of the circuitry, the musicality and that sort of thing, but put it in a form that's not intimidating to the average person. And um, so that was, you know, my long answer to your two short questions, but, uh, but that's kind of well, where no, it came it's, 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 it's a good answer. And it gives us that foundation to kind of explore a little bit further. And, and the next place I want to go is actually the product. So I was looking at the website uh, just, just today, in fact, and um, it looks like, I know you guys make headphones, but the home audio, it looks like it's, there's basically two product lines. There's the spin line and the model one line. And I yep. know there's some similarities. There's some differences, certainly in terms of price point. Can you just give us a, an overview of the spin line, the model one line and how they differ? Sure. Well, the model, the model one's where it started, hence the model name. Um, we, lack in imagination in that respect. <laughs> <laughs> you know, maybe the next one could be the Model 2. I don't know. But the, <laughs> but the, um, uh, the Model 1 is where it all started, and that's really where it was uh, a recreation, I guess. I, I, I don't know if you call it a, a flashback, a recreation, or whatever. You know, back in the 60s and, and even into the 70s, the idea of a one-piece, quote, record player was very popular there were there were a lot of them around people it was the introduction uh for a lot of people into into records into music i mean of course records was all it was in the 60s but you know and, and real to real but um and it was such a a convenient format you know there were some good ones there were some bad ones but just the format was just so natural uh, a box you plug it into the wall you put a record on it plays and it sounds pretty okay um, with technology now we can bring that up a number of steps from where it was back in the 60s obviously but then you run into the the, the bugaboo now of 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 um you know, high compliance cartridges, good speakers with good bass response, you put those together in a box and it just doesn't work. So it's basically impossible to put a, a turntable in a box with speakers and not have it feedback, not have it distort. Um, and that was the challenge, obviously. I mean, that's that's kind of the elephant in the room when, when you bring this up to anyone that, that knows audio. Uh, and it didn't, it, it worked okay in the past because you had very stiff, low compliance cartridges that weren't really success, uh, ec susceptible to feedback. Um, you had speakers that were, you know, open back in a cabinet. They didn't really produce good bass response. So we've got higher expectations now. You know, we want good full range, you know, hit your chest, thump and bass response and, and uh, the things that you get from a, a good separate component system. So the challenge is how do you get that in a, in a box with a record player? And, uh, we developed a technology called IsoGroove, and it's a combination of how the speakers are arranged, how the cabinet's built, and then a couple of little electronic tricks to put the icing on the cake. And those go into making a very successful product that you can put a turntable in the top. We've shown it at a variety of audio shows. We introduced it at Rocky Mountain. Uh, may they rest in peace. Um, but uh, people are just amazed by it, and they don't believe it. it it's works you know people are going in when they come into the rooms and they look behind the curtains to see where we're hiding speakers yeah. and that sort of thing you know but uh but it does work but because it was our flagship product uh we didn't want to to hold back so we're using a really good pro project turntable it's not you know their best turntable but it's not their cheapest either um it's a good middle of the line turntable, uh, good cartridge, carbon fiber arm, et cetera, et cetera. We've got uh, AMT uh, tweeters, uh, like you see in a lot of you know, higher end bookshelf speakers these days, really good woofers with very linear magnet structures, you know, the, the uh, high resolution digital inputs, all the stuff you'd expect in a good, decent quality, um, separate component system in a box that makes it easy. And it appeals to folks who've got um, perfectionist tastes, but for whatever reason, either they don't want to deal with the complexity, they've got a small room, they're downsizing. Every, you know, our customers have reported back all kinds of different reasons, but it's clear to us that it fits a format that um, 
really has a lot of appeal to a lot of people, and it's been very successful for us. However, for the entry, the more entry level customer spending two thousand dollars or or more, if you got buy the accessories and the subwoofer, for that sort of thing, is not the attainable, accessible kind of product that. Um, right. You're thinking of, you know, that that Henry talked about and that we like to produce. So that's where the spin system products came came from. Um, there are a lot of people we found at the the audio shows. A lot of people told us, well, you know, I've got a I've got my my old Techniques turntable in the garage. I, I what do you have that I could hook this up to, you know? Or um, they've got a, a ton of records that they just haven't played and they want a simple way to do it. So I said, well, let's take that same ISO groove technology that, that allows us to put the turntable in with the speakers and just make a product where you can put the turntable on it. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's where spin base came along. That at $300 is a, is a steal because that's priced like uh, a lot of um, small bookshelf loudspeakers. It competes very favorably with them in terms of sound quality. You know, you're, you're you're in the audio business, so you know you can never make everybody happy <laughs> with every combination. Right. Uh, so some people like ours better. Some people might like the bookshelves better, but uh, but it, there's there's no denying that it's the most convenient way to do it. You just stick the turntable on top, plug it into the back, one button, turn it on for volume, and you know that's it. And it works with anything. Um, we even have people that are using. Uh, little, uh, you know, the, the Crosley and Victrola type uh, speak, uh, turntables that have uh, ceramic cartridges, in, you know, as a stepping stone. Not with that, that we're recommending that that's the be all end all. You know, Crosley on a spin base is, is not the, the end of the line in terms of audiophile nirvana, but um, it's a good stepping stone for somebody that has one of those players. They can use it that, you know, if they're, they're budget limited, use it that way for a while. Uh, we have a ceramic cartridge special EQ on it that flattens out the response of those cartridges so it doesn't have that, that steely high frequency response and lack of bass that you, you're used to with, with ceramics. And um, then they can add a spin deck, you know, or then add a spin sub and build the system up just like you would with separate components, but in a way that doesn't take the, the, uh, the learning requirements that someone has to do to get into our hobby uh, where they've got to learn about phono preamps and they've got to learn about integrated amplifiers and all this other stuff and speaker wires and, and devote a place to put it. It's just an easy, an easy way to go. And it's a great way for someone who wants to get into our hobby, but doesn't want to have to, go through a, a crash course in technology to do so um, and build from there. Yeah, you know, it, it, when you're describing it, it really strikes me as just a reimagining of the classic console stereo system. But it has an advantage in that you can build it out, right? And you guys, yep. so, so, so that's in that sense, it's similar to a component system that you can add to over time or you can upgrade over time. But you're you end up with this, you know, if you put the sub with it, you end up with this essentially classic console system, but then has completely updated technology. And yeah, I love the concept, man. It, it's really uh, it's really cool. Um, so the next question that I have for you and, you know, it's it's interesting, you know, how everything old is new again, kind of a thing. <laughs> but but you guys are really integrating components you know, more so, even even more so than, you know, maybe a manufacturer that makes pre-amplifiers and, and stereo amplifiers and a, and a source component that are hooked up with somebody else's cables. You guys are integrating components to, to essentially make one finished system, so to speak, yeah. I guess is a way to put it. How, what are the engineering challenges, you know, and I know that's kind of a loaded question, but what are the, the challenges of making integrated components, everything that works together, or do you see it as simply an advantage because you have all of the, um, you know, uh, you know, you have everything under your control, so to speak. You know, it, it's it, it's. I'm going to tap dance a little bit because it's both. I mean, it's an advantage as well as a disadvantage. I mean, from the the complexity 
um, is when you're dealing with a product, I'll use the Model 1 as an example because that's the most integrated of, of all of them. Um, you've got a uh, a turntable that is sensitive to vibration in the, you know, in the same box as the things that vibrate the speakers. You've also got the most sensitive um, pickup of noise and uh, electromagnetic interference in the form of the phono cartridge that's near all that stuff. Um, so that, uh, you know, you've got a packaging challenge um, in terms of, you know, making sure that the, the whole uh, device is as quiet as you would expect if you had those things separated around. But then you've also got an advantage because now you don't have the interconnections anymore. You know, everything's directly connected. Uh, you don't have to worry about, you know, your speaker wires, your interconnects. Um, you also, from our perspective, we have the advantage of knowing if we know the, the loudspeakers, the amplifiers driving, for example, we can optimally match that amplifier to those loudspeakers. We don't need more power than we have in a Model 1. And if we had less power, it would compromise the performance. So we're able to, to do that sort of matching all the way down the line. The, um, you know, as audiophiles, we, we understand how to, we, um, to get the most out of a magnetic cartridge, it requires the right loading and capacitance and, and resistive loading to the cartridge. We can optimize that in the package. Um, and little things like that all the way, all the way through are an advantage of the, of the integrated system. Um, so it's, it, it really is a, a mix of both things. Uh, it, and it really is... Most manifest, I think, in the cost effectiveness of the spin base because, um, you know, that was built to be at a, you know, not entry level bargain basement price, but at a, at a good entry level uh, price where you can where you can still get quality equipment uh, by really optimizing the amplifier to speaker uh, relationship and, and, uh, uh, and that sort of thing, uh, we were able to get the, the best bang for the buck in terms of sound quality for reasonable money in a small package. And then, you know, threw in Bluetooth because you have to have that. You can't sell a toilet <laughs> with it these days. Right? <laughs> Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the yeah, truth? And, and well, the reality is... I'm sorry, uh, I was going to say, the reality is even though these are vinyl focused products, most of the time they're probably used with Bluetooth as the source for most people. So yeah, it's very... Who would have who thought that the two source components would be Bluetooth and vinyl in 2021? You know, yeah. if you would have said that 10, 15 years ago, that would have probably, <laughs> you would have been laughed right out of the audio store. Uh, well, listen, Bob, the last question that I have for you, and I just want to kind of point people to the About Us page on the Andover Audio website, because, you know, you go through and you look at the staff that you guys have assembled. And I know a lot of those folks came from from Cambridge, but, you know, there's 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 other there are other companies. That, and I guess some of that DNA that is in Andover, you guys have a wealth of talent at your company. And. So, and you've got a, a, a growing product line. I know you guys make headphones as well, but I can't help but think that there's some stuff under development and Andover. And, you know, you may not be able to tell us exactly, you know, the next products that are coming, but give us a little, a little hint, inside view in what you guys are working on. What's, what's going on in the R&D department at Andover? A lot. Uh, actually, you know, <laughs> you've, you've, uh, you've, you've pegged it. You know, we, we have a lot of people that have come from a lot of different, um, disciplines. Uh, we've got people from AR, um, Apogee Acoustics, ADS, I mean, you know, all over the, 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 the spectrum and everybody's got a little input, uh, into what we're going to do. Um, if you think back to what I talked about, about making products simple, accessible, and understandable, um, and you know, easy to, to use and easy to buy for people, uh, everything we're working on is in that direction. Um, okay. There's some, there's some logic to it uh, in the sense that if you look at, you know, as, as we talked about, spin base is sort of at one end of the spectrum, model one sort of at the other end of the spectrum. Uh, we're certainly working on filling in the middle. <laughs> You know, between okay. those, uh, as well as branching out into 
some other areas. Um, you know, we've we're not going to produce something just to be a me too product. Uh, it's it's got to have some different um, spin, you know, so to speak, something that we think is useful uh, to the to the market, and and that's increasingly difficult when we've got so many players out there that are making, you know. Good DAX, good headphone amps, good phono preamps, you know, that sort of thing. Um, you know, if we get into that, those categories, we've got some ideas uh, that, um, you know, for example, uh, you know, in the, the headphone side, we've got some little tricks that we uh, are spinoffs of what we developed in the panorama mode on the Model 1 that makes it sound like speakers are further apart, uh, where um, we can incorporate similar circuitry for headphones to help the get the imaging out of your head and to, to be a little bit more more natural um things like that uh song uh, songbird has been a very very popular category for us uh, we've gotten a really good reputation of making a a good sounding very inexpensive streamer adapter uh where um a lot of the reviewers have, have you know are raving over it and and uh Consumers um, have recognized that uh, uh, it's a really good sounding product. Uh, it's a category that we plan on expanding uh, with other products in the future. Um, so, you know, those are probably not earth shaking uh, <laughs> realizations, you know, because they're kind of logical progressions. But just, you know, let it be known that we're not going to continue, we're not going to be the vinyl company you know so to speak we 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 feel like uh we've got something to add to all different categories of the of the audio industry um are we going to come out with a two-way four-inch bookshelf powered loudspeaker and then next year no yeah <laughs> there's, there's right. hundreds of people doing that but but we do have uh, a number of ideas to um uh to help to be true to our our uh, goal of keeping it simple and keeping it understandable, but yet uh, some really good additions uh, that are that are unique and a little different than what everybody else is going to be out there doing. Well, Bob, listen, really, I really appreciate the inside look into Andover. I think uh, you know everybody that that maybe maybe had seen the products from from a distance, but really didn't know exactly what they're about. They definitely have a better understanding now. And uh, hopefully they can, they can, you know, get somewhere where they can hear uh, the Andover, either the Model 1 or the Spin or the headphones, uh, you know, at some point in the near future. But that's all I've got for you today, Bob. I really appreciate your time and uh, have a great weekend. Great. Thank you. You too. And, and keep, enjoy, keep enjoying the music. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you.